What is up, Nuggets? It's your boy, Killer Pizza here, with a brand new video for all you rascals and rap scallions out there. Now tonight, I'm going to do a little horror collection update video. I actually haven't done one since the complete horror collection video I released on the first day of 2020. So I have many titles to show you guys, so I will try not to ramble and get through these as quick as I can. First up, the official sponsor of Hipsters Who Like Horror, Lost Boys. Now, I'm just giving this movie a hard time, but it's pretty good. I'm not normally a fan of like vampire horror movies, but in my opinion, this is my favorite vampire horror movie. Uh, this is kind of a movie that transcends horror. Like, you don't have to be a horror fan to enjoy this movie. So, overall, this is a pretty fun one to pick up for anyone. Then we got The Dead Next Door. I just watched this not too long ago. It's a very low budget zombie flick from 1990, but it has uh, a lot of the fundamentals of George A. Romero zombie movies, the way I like zombies. And though it's uh, kind of low budget, the practical effects and gore are great. There's this awesome scene where the zombie bites off uh, this guy's fingers and then they cut the zombie's head off with a machete. And then they show the severed head, but the fingers are like poking out underneath like the little rascals wave. Because, obviously, when they went to swallow the fingers, it went straight through the throat. i never kind of seen anything like that before. So, uh, yeah, uh, low budget, kind of cheesy, but worth a watch. Then we have Baba Hotep. Bruce Campbell can do no wrong. Pretty much uh, the story is Bruce Campbell was Elvis Presley. And Elvis Presley got tired of the fame. So they... Uh, he switched identities with the Elvis impersonator, then the real Elvis died, and it left Bruce Campbell being the Elvis impersonator with the identity he had, and he just claims he's Elvis into his senile old age, into an old folks home, and then uh, he has to end up fighting off this mummy with uh, Elvis Presley karate. So, uh, yeah, that's a lot to take in, right? But uh, worth a watch. Very fun, very fun movie. Then we have The Howling, which uh, a lot of consider... The uh, best werewolf movie b behind American Werewolf in London, and I believe this is the first uh, werewolf movie where the woman becomes the werewolf. So excited to check this one out. Rawhead Rex, uh, Clive Barker film I never heard of. Uh, they once said Clive Barker was the future of horror, obviously with Hellraiser and Nightbreed. So I was kind of surprised to see like this uh, creature feature film he came out with that I never heard of. So, uh, pretty excited to check this one out. Rawhead Rex. The monster looks pretty cool. Puppet Master. Uh, not the best movie, but it's weird how some of these movies stand out. Like, this, this movie has, like, a lot of sequels, but they're not the best. But at the same time, I definitely remember this. Like, anybody my age remembers growing up with Puppet Master. I probably haven't seen this in 20 years, but I felt it had to be on my shelf. Now, this one I thought was the remake of My Bloody Valentine. My Bloody Valentine 3D turns out it's just Valentine, which I heard a lot of terrible things about. But I will not judge the movie from what I've heard. Uh, for nothing else, it's a pretty nice Scream Factory release. I will check this one out sooner than later or not. Wes Craven Shocker. This was always a, a film that kept coming up in my suggestions of, of a movie I should pick up. But I kind of got thrown off by it because it, it's pretty much like a prisoner who gets killed, the, the execution, and he ends up like scaring some girl in her dreams, chasing her in her dreams. And it seems very similar to Freddy Krueger, especially because it's the same exact director. Uh, but, you know, I'll have to check this one out just to see what it's all about. Until then, on the shelf it goes. Alice Sweet Alice, which is mostly known for being Brooke Shields' uh, first, one of her first roles. This is apparently one of the first slasher movies, kind of more of like a whodunit kind of mystery deal. Uh, I was not really too interested in this, but I know Arrow released a pretty cool copy of this on Blu-ray. And I've seen some people talking about it, so I figured why not. Then we have Sorority Babes and the Slime Ball Bolorama. This just seemed campy and fun. I watched it. I was not too impressed. It is what it is. This is kind of like a movie uh, you throw on when you have people over and nobody's really paying attention to the movie. Just kind of a background kind of thing. Uh, 
I mean, decent price. I mean, some of you guys might like it. I mean, my taste is different than yours. I don't want to disparage any movie, but I didn't really care for it. Then we have Witchboard, which is, uh, I don't know much about this, kind of a blind buy. I know there's a sequel that's supposed to be pretty good too, but pretty much a horror movie based around a Ouija board, which I think is pretty cool. Not too into paranormal ghost kind of movies, horror movies, but the Ouija board makes it kind of intriguing. I mean, the cover alone, cover art's pretty cool. Movies like that where I hear uh, the sequel's good makes me excited to watch like the first one. Just like, so then I have two movies that are good, if, if that makes sense. Then I have uh, Driller Killer. I heard a lot of good things about this for the longest time. Another Arrow release. Uh, I feel like Slumber Party Massacre had me holding off on buying this. Because I was like, I was so loyal to Russ, Russ Thorne. Like, the Driller Killer in my heart is Russ Thorne from Slumber Party Massacre. So when I heard about Driller Killer, which came out, like, way before Slumber Party Massacre, I was like, whatever. But uh, I continue to hear good things. The cover art's pretty cool. Arrow video, as I was saying, always has good releases. So this one goes on my shelf as well. Now we have Queens of Scream, which have three different horror movies on it. Uh, they have... I Know What You Did Last Summer, When Stranger Calls, A Vacancy. I pretty much only got this for I Know What You Did Last Summer because for some reason all the Blu-ray copies of that movie are like 40 50 bucks, And I just watched it not too long ago and it was just, it was just okay. But for my age, th these movies kind of came out when I was young, like the resurgence of slashers after Scream. So uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer... And Scream, The Faculty, you know, those kind of movies hold a special place in my heart for, like, the age I was. So, uh, nice to have this in my collection. I mean, don't get me wrong, the movie was fun, I just wasn't the best. Then we got The Prowler, uh, some, I believe some Vietnam vet gets killed and he comes back on, like, some anniversary of a dance and starts slaughtering everybody. This is, uh, eff Practical Effects by Tom Savini. The effects are absolutely amazing. This is a great movie. Uh, I think the only bad part is it drags a little bit in between the kills, but the kills alone make it worth it. If you like good practical effects, Tom Savini's the man. The Prowler is a good pickup. And then we have Shaun of the Dead, which I actually uh, was thinking about making a video pretty soon about like the difference between comedy and horror. Like what makes a horror movie horror? What makes a comedy movie comedy when there's aspects of both in the movie? Because there's definitely comedy in this, but it's definitely horror. And then it, same could be said vice versa about other films. But I consider this horror because of the content. You know, the situation. It's a zombie apocalypse, really. And then you got to factor in the kills and whatnot. Uh, you could really place this on anywhere on your shelf. But for the sake of OCD, I had to find a section of genre to put this in, and I went with horror. One of my very favorite movies, by the way. Then we have A Cabin in the Woods. I absolutely have no interest to really watch this, but I had two good friends of mine, Nick Baker and the Pope, Brandon Brownson, both told me they thought I would like this movie, and I should review it. And to be honest with you guys, I'm just flattered that people are watching my reviews and want to listen to me review a movie because, you know, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no critic and I tend to ramble on and whatnot. Uh, but I'm going to check this one out. So a review is going to be coming in the future for Cabin in the Woods. Never seen it. First time watch. And then uh, speaking of, speaking of the difference between horror and comedy, I threw this in the horror section too. It's Zombieland 2 Double Tap. Because Woody fucking Harrelson. I actually really like this movie. I heard a lot of bad things. At least in comparison to the first. Which I had to pick up also. After I got the second. So now I have Zombieland 1 and 2. I consider both of these horror. Though there are laughs. Both great movies. Then we have Zombie 4. Which is a classic in the zombie franchise from Italy. Italian zombie movies are some of the best you'll see. Because they make things the most human. Sometimes uh, things get a little off in American zombie movies, unless they're like George A. Romero zombie movies, but 
These all hold up very well, except for this one. My friend Dennis told me they're all good, but Zombie 4. And I bought it anyways, and it wasn't very good. I mean, not that it was bad. My taste might be different than yours. I just maybe didn't stand up uh, compared to the, the two before it. Because Zombie 4 is actually Zombie 3 in Italy, but that's a whole other video. Then we have Demonic Toys, which is another video everybody always tells me sucks. I see online, they say it sucks, but for some reason, I love this movie. I grew up watching this all the time with my sister. We used to rent this all the time from the video store. I love everything about it. And now that I'm older, you know, I've, I've watched it back and it's clearly not good, but I just can't not love this movie. Demonic Toys. Uh, from a favor from me, I would suggest getting this. Well worth it. Not one you'll see in a lot of collections, but it's pretty good. And then we got uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street. This is kind of the generic box set you can pick up at Walmart. I was waiting for the longest time. Uh, like my problem with uh, when I collected the Halloween series, they they had a really cool Scream Factory release the whole box set of all of them. But uh, it, it, it got sold out over time But by the time I started collecting. So I held off waiting for like a cool Halloween box set but it never came out so i had to buy all the movies separately and same thing kind of happened with this i was i don't really like the packaging and everything so i was kind of waiting for a new release but as time went on i just thought i have to have a nightmare on elm street in my horror collection so i i, I folded and i bought one through seven box set of nightmare on elm street because this is a must-have obviously uh for any horror collector Then we have Terror Firmer, some trauma in the mix. Uh, I'm a fan of trauma to an extent. I'm a fan of Lloyd Kaufman, more of a fan of independent filmmaking. But to be honest with you guys, this movie was horrible. Uh, I don't want to talk too bad about it because some people might like it. I just It had its moments, but I felt like my brain was melting when I watched this. Uh, just not, not a big fan of it. I'll support Lloyd Kaufman and trauma forever, but... Ah, a little too. It's like almost like slapstick in a horror way. You know, that might be your thing. Support trauma. Last two. I got My Bloody Valentine, the original from 1981. Awesome release through Scream Factory. I did a review about this on Valentine's Day. So if you guys have watched that video, you know how high I hold this one. I thought this movie was absolutely amazing. And then after that... I've been told for a while that uh, the remake, uh, My Bloody Valentine 3D, was pretty pretty dang good uh, compared to the original. And that's pretty rare in most movies, especially horror. So I ended up picking, my picking up My Bloody Valentine 3D, the remake, because I heard it was really good. After I, Especially after I watched the original. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, this was a pretty big haul. It was uh, two months worth of collecting. I got some good ones. Probably got some bad ones. Depends. We will see. But Big old stack. Yeah, you know, I uh, appreciate you guys watching the channel. I just uh, really like collecting horror movies. It's really fun. Uh, I get a lot of stinkers I watch, but there's so many I check out that are amazing. And it's kind of like the thrill of the hunt. And the people that are fans of horror are some special people. Because, you know, it's just so, it's a, it's a different genre, you know. Uh, so, to anybody who supports my channel, likes to watch horror movies, you know I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Feel free to share. Uh, other than that, Blood Guts Gore. I'll check you guys next time.